Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to tell you how to get a ton of energy through a certain mod combination. It's really beginner friendly, it's really easy to do, and it's honestly insanely good. Uh, a lot of people know about this, but I'm also very sure that a lot of people do not know about this. So most of the information's in like the first 8 minutes of the video that you need to know. And if you're a newer player, it'll benefit you to stick around because I show you how to farm the gear you'll need and share lots of useful information. So let's get right into it. Okay, so about this mod interaction that's going to give you a ton of energy, the three mods you're going to need are Synth Fiber, Synth Deconstruct, and Equilibrium. The mod Equilibrium goes onto your Warframe, and what it does is when you pick up a Health Orb, you also get energy along with the health, up to a certain percent depending on how much you've leveled up the mod. And then the other mod, Synth Fiber and Synth Deconstruct, Synth Deconstruct, when a companion damages an enemy, uh, it has a 25% chance to drop a health orb. And then Synth Fiber is when a health orb is picked up by, I don't know if it's considered you or your companion, it gives you armor, 100% uh, armor to your companion. But the important thing is, is that you're, you or your companion can pick up the health orb regardless of your Warframe's health. So even if your Warframe has max health, it will pick up the health orb. So the interaction here is Synth Deconstruct hopefully gets a health orb to drop, and then you're able to pick it up regardless of your health because of Synth Fiber, and then because of Equilibrium, the health orb will also give you energy. So the important thing is, is that you need a companion that damages a lot of enemies, and a lot of these don't do it just very well. Um, so like, like th this is not the carrier's weapon, this is actually the weapon that you get with the tax on, like the first uh, sentinel in the game. Basically, it just beams one enemy and then nothing else really happens. Just doing that. You're not damaging a lot of enemies. You're not you're not going to get a lot of health, orb to, health orbs to drop. Even if you're like killing them, it's going to do it very slowly. So, get rid of those guys. And then, so I did a lot of testing. And the one thing that surprised me is that these sentinels have these damage mods. Are like mods that do damage and these don't affect synth deconstruct even though this is going to zap seven enemies doing damage and then also putting electricity procs on them this is not going to get health orbs to drop so simulate and i've tested this a lot so basically if you don't damage enemies at all one to four health orbs would drop when i obliterate all these enemies so he's damaging all of them there's electric procs on some of them and the electric procs are also damaging enemies, which also does not spread uh, synth deconstruct. And yeah, I got four health orbs. And that's normal. That's if you didn't have these mods at all, uh, it would do that. So what I found is gas procs actually do work, even though electricity procs don't, which doesn't make sense. And then, okay, so this is the best thing, the deconstructor. You can get gas procs to proc really easily with this high status of chance. The, you do not need the prime version. Whoops, wrong button. You do not need the prime version because it still has the same amount of status chance between the two of them. And also like the same magazine size, whatever. It just does more damage with the prime. This is just what I have, so I'm using it. So I have gas on it with these two mods. Um, Fury, just more attack speed and then more status chance. Okay, so now you'll see these gas procs work. I'll show you how much more health you get from this. Come back here. Okay. Gas proc, please. All right, that's a gas proc. A lot of them are taking damage. Boom. 250 health. That's way more than the other one. Um, like a more accurate example, so obviously grouping up enemies and doing that is super awesome, but that's not going to happen, especially if you don't have a Warframe that groups. So... Even then, the Helio still shoots uh, these glaives out and damages a lot of enemies. They even bounce around, and then they will create gas procs that damage other enemies that are close to them. So this is a more accurate representation of like what's gonna happen. Just go around and beat shit up, yeah. I don't know how much health I got there, but it was enough to prove my example. Yeah, it just kept dropping it. But that's pretty accurate of what it would look like if you were just doing a normal mission. Okay, so the other companion that I recommend um, is the Panzer Volpophila. Who would have thought? I thought this thing would be amazing with it, but it's just good. And this is because when the Panzer is alive, it's doing everything that it's supposed to be doing. I will show you. So it shoots quills, these like green lines at enemies. I'm trying. 
Oh my god, he's so active. There he goes. You saw him do it. And he also bite enemies and everything. So let me kill off the enemies and show you the health I get. I got 100 health. 125. These guys are away. They haven't been affected. But I'm getting health. It's It does what it's supposed to. It's pretty good. It's definitely good in like a real scenario too. And then... um. But the problem is, is when the Panzer dies, both the synth mods do not work. Let me kill off this guy. All right, so my Vulpophile is dead. You can see him up above me. I'll even round up the enemies to make it easy. And he's gonna shoot at him. So he, <laughs> I think he just shot at dead bodies. I'll let him shoot at these guys in the back. Shoot some guys on the side. And kill him. I get like, well, it did drop some health, more than usual, but by like one. But then I can't pick it up, so it's useless regardless. But I assure you that Deconstruct is not working. I think that was just really insanely good RNG. So even though this guy dies and it stops working, he's still going to revive. And if you put mods on it that let it survive, like Link Armor and Link Health, then it's going to do really well, especially for the earlier levels. Both the Vulpophila and Helios are pretty good early game recommendations. You can get these really early into the game. Um, but some later game recommendations I have are two Sentinel weapons. I'm just going to use Death Cube because I have the build on him that, on him that I need. Um, and then the Prisma Burst Laser. This you can get from the Prisma Shade when you buy it from uh, Baro Katir, the Void Trader that comes bi-weekly. It has really good status and you just put gas on it with the same mods as before. And then just some fire rate. And so, yeah, and you can get a ton of fire rate on this thing because it's a secondary, or it uses like secondary mods. The other weapon is the Hellstrom, which shoots rockets. And you get this when your uh, Cetus, no, not your Cetus, your Fortuna standing is maxed out. You can get this from Legs, the guy that sells Moas. And it uses rifle mods, so you can put on Primed Firestorm for a bigger blast radius. I think that explains it. Some good examples, some things that I think kill it really well. And now I'm going to farm up a really early game build with these mods and show you that you can get this super early. You won't have energy problems as much for a really long time. And then there's even some more energy things that I'll show you that can help you out. Okay, I'm going to talk about some really basic concepts for newer players. If you feel like your energy is constantly running out, you're probably overusing it or using your abilities incorrectly, or building wrong. And I'm gonna go over some of these really quick. Okay, so on Volt, you can use his big alt ability to like wipe a room. Actually, it didn't even kill that guy, didn't even kill that guy. So that was 100, 100 energy to kill, okay, it killed all those guys. That was 100 energy to kill six enemies. Or instead, you can use his one right, right when you start the game. It's decently strong against weak enemies. And that was 30 energy to kill six enemies. So make sure you know like how much ability usage you actually have to use. Obviously, Volts 1 falls off really fast. Once they hit like level 20, it's not going to kill and your ult's going to be better. But something you can do, this is a little bit more mid-gamey, I'd say. But on Volt, you can put on an augment mod called Shock Trooper to make it so if you hold cast your 1, that's not my 1, my one, uh, see in the top right, it put an electricity buff on my weapon. So now my weapon's stronger, and this is for 15 energy. I can do that. So I use my ability for 15 energy to do a ton of damage. Also, with your mods, you have something like Streamline, where abil ability efficiency makes it so your abilities cost less. So the alt costs 100, put this on, 30% ability efficiency, and now costs 70. And my one costs even less also. Not every Warframe needs that, and if you have enough uh, like capacity, where, where's flow, where's flow? I don't think I have a real flow. So this flow, the energy max, this will increase how much energy I can actually hold at one time. So it does that, but you don't wanna use a flawed mod. They're just very bad. I mean, if that's all you got, you put it on, but. So this will make it so I can hold more energy at a time and it'll cost less. So I can use way more abilities per just energy bar. The duration of your abilities is really important. Like with Volt's speed buff, 
I will have to cast this every 12 seconds if I want to stay fast. But if you put on continuity, it's every 15 seconds, which there's even more duration mods in the game. This is just a slight example. So this is literally saving me energy because I have to cast the ability less. Also, depending on some abilities, if you put uh, intensify on for more ability strength, it will give you more damage. This one goes from 200 to 260. Again, this is only going to kill... Instead of killing level 10 enemies, it'll probably kill like level 12 instead. This is very minor, but something to think about nonetheless. So right now at MR5, this is what my Volt build looks like. I just have to put one more format on him since I added Equilibrium onto this. And so I can put my Rush back on to be quick. I, very, I have n little to no energy problems. And if you look at my last video where I use Exodia Contagion, I go through a disruption run up to level 100 using my abilities. I don't use my alt because that's more of an endgame ability that you use for certain situations, but the other three are very useful that you use a lot. So if you watch that video, you can see I get really far. I don't have energy problems. The reason I had to stop going on my, uh, what's it called, my endurance run was not because I ran out of energy and had problems with that. So lastly... There's a few more things that can really help you with your energy economy, and I don't have time to go over all of them. This video is already going to be pretty long, and not what this video is about. It's mostly just about this uh, mod combo that is is—it's pretty well known. It's just not, I haven't seen many videos on it, and people see, still seem to be having problems with energy, so I wanted to make a video on it. But some other things that can help you are the mods Primed Flow, Primed Continuity, Streamline, Fleeting Expertise, Preparation, the Xeneric Focus School, once you get your Operator. And then once you're MR8, you can get the two Helmet abilities that give you a ton of energy. Dispensary, along with the Mod Equilibrium. And then also Spectro Rage from uh, Gara with the Spectro Siphon Augment Mod. If you need Synth Fiber and Synth Deconstruct, you'll need to go to Venus for both of them uh, on Fortuna. You get them from doing the bounties there. It's one of the rare rewards. If you haven't completed, or if you haven't gone to Fortuna before, you will have to complete a quest first, and then you can come to Utico and click on the bounties. Um, there's different sets of bounties that cycle every two and a half hours. There's three sets. I'm pretty sure it goes in the order of uh, synth mods. It's the rare reward right here. So there's like synth mods, mecha mods, and then tech mods in that order. So you can time out how long it'll be until you can get these. So the two bounties we have to do are this one for Synth Deconstruct and this one for Synth Fiber. And then also if you want to make Helios, uh, you need Field Drawns. So this is like two birds, one stone right here. And also some Tellarium, which is pretty good for early game. So I'm going to farm these up. Um, I'm probably going to do it solo. But if you're a new player, you just want to do it in a public match and hope other people join and carry you through the mission, honestly. Uh, I can do them solo because I got a pretty strong weapon uh, called Exodia Contagion. It's this Zaw here with the arcane. If you don't know what that is, you can check out my other video about it. Okay, so I'm on my last bounty stage for Synth Deconstruct. It looks like you can only get this mod on the last stage. It's a 25% chance. But if you complete all the bonuses, like the bonus for this one is complete within four minutes, then you get two rolls on the last stage. And the app I'm using to see these uh, rewards and the drop chances is called Looter for Warframe. It's on my Android phone. I'm sure there's other places you can look this up, but I just want to let you know since i throwing it on screen. So I'm just going to restart this bounty from out here and go again. Hopefully third time's the charm. <laughs> that is such a horrible reward, actually. Yes, let's go. All right, I'm cashing this in. All right, I'm going to farm up those field drones and synth fiber now. It looks like field drones have a good chance of dropping in every stage besides the fifth one. And synth fiber has a horrible chance to drop in the fourth and a really good chance to drop in the fifth. And I get two rolls on that, so this should be quick. But I'm also going to farm up ten of these. Nice. This was actually the first one, uh, well this is my third bounty, but this was the first one that I actually got all the bonuses on, so. But I got it on the first drop anyway. The last mod you need drops from Lephantis. 
the boss on this node. Uh, in the first phase, it like has three heads that pop out of the ground that you gotta kill. It will drop, it has a 7.5% chance to drop from one of those heads, so you get three chances every time at 7.5% chance. And then it cannot drop from the second phase once you fall through the floor. This boss is like a little harder to kill than some early game bosses. Uh, you can just, again, run in a public lobby and get carried, but I'll show you that. I can just gun it down with this nothing build and a shock trooper on vault. And then I'll show you I can kill it with that, and then I'm going to use my broken thing so I can get through these missions quicker. The only guy you got to worry about is this one with the scythe. Um, he has two attacks. You roll this one, the overhead one. Just roll it to the side. Then his other attack, this one, you just jump over it. Yes! Finally. I was slowly getting very bored. I started watching TikToks. Alright, how many times did that take? Four, five, one. So that was ten. Ten runs until I got Equilibrium. And I still need one more Chassis to make two Necros. Next, I'm going to go grab uh, the Helios Blueprint from the Clan Dojo. If you're not in a clan, you can just go to this recruiting chat over here. I, my mouse doesn't exist. Uh, okay. This recruiting chat, and you, a lot of people just recruit here. Oh, here. Pff, perfect. Recording. This is MR7+, plus, but there will be, there's clans that will take uh, anyone. So you can either wait for this, or you can just say, looking for clan with everything researched and usually someone will message you and then you just go to your inbox make sure you check your inbox because sometimes people will just straight up invite you uh inbox and then you'll be able to accept the clan through here then you got to go to your foundry and build a clan key and then once you wait 12 hours for your clan key to build you can fast travel to the uh, fucking energy lab question mark and then, yep, you go to the Sentinel page, and then you get Helios. So this is the blueprint. To make him, you need the field drones, which I already showed you how to get. Uh, one way to get field drones was from Fortuna Bounties. You can also buy blueprints here, and they take like 12 hours to craft. What does it even take to craft them? Yeah, not much. Uh, plastid, that's really annoying early game. Um, you can also do invasions, which are these things right here. Uh, oh, you're not going to have many of them as a new player, so maybe not. All right, probably definitely the way I got them was the best way to get them. Oxium, you get from IO on Jupiter. It's a defense mission. Uh, IO is the node name. It's just the IO. And then also there are other Fortuna bounties where you can get Oxium as the reward. I also suggest doing that because you only got to get like, it's like 200 per reward. So it's really good. Uh, ferrite you get from either Earth or the Void, and then Forma you have to crack relics to get the blueprint for them, then you craft them in your foundry. The relics are like those Lith, Meso, and other things that you go do Fisher missions on, if you didn't know these things. Yeah, Forma blueprint, right there. Okay, so let me grab this, and I'll go make them. Okay, I got my little Helios boy, look how cute he is. Uh, I just rushed the build with plat, never do that, but I had 50 plat from starting the game that you can't trade for whatever reason, so I might as well use it on something that can help me make my video faster. Okay, I'm gonna go level them up now so I can put mods on them. So if you have no good leveling methods, like Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, regular Sanctuary Onslaught, you don't have Hydron unlocked, you can go to Saris and do Gabby. This is one of the best credit farms too, when you just leave the mission at 5 minutes for early game. But also a lot of people play it for Oricon cells, so just join a public lobby and play there. I got my boy all ranked up, and I'll make a build for you. Uh, assault mode, so this is what actually makes it so your sentinel attacks with its weapon. I... it depends... there's something with mods where... where's another mod? So this is Helios's like special mod. It gives him an objective to like scan enemies or whatever so if i put this here in front of assault mode he would prioritize it the order goes from like reading a book so top left to bottom right like that 
So if I put this in front of assault mode, he'd prioritize it over assault. But if I put this here, he'll prior prioritize attacking. So you always kind of want to put what you want your pet to do in the top left slot. Or anything in front of other mods that you don't want them to do as often. But I'm not even putting that on there. That was just for an example. I don't need a level assault mode because he shoots glaives. If he's shooting them at enemies that are too far away, then it's just going to... They're going to miss. So I'm just going to leave that unleveled. Also, it takes up no mod capacity when it's unleveled. Does it take up mod capacity anyway? Yeah, okay, it does. So... This is the build I would suggest for now. On Heliosa's weapon, I still need the 60-60 status chance mods. For the Toxin one, it's called Virulent Scourge, and you get it from fighting Corrupted Vor on one of the end nodes in the void here. So I think like some of these, whatever like the longer missions are, he appears and you fight him and it has a 25% chance of dropping. He drops all the 60-60 toxin mods. Uh, but yeah, it's going to take me forever to get there and I don't feel like getting taxied, so I'm just going to buy that for 5 plat on the market. Really just, let's see if I can get someone. Nice, that was like 10 seconds. So for the other 60-60 mod, Volcanic Edge, you need to do Rotation C of a spy mission. This one works on Mars, so this is the one I'm going to do. Uh, to get Rotation C, you have to unlock all three vaults. So if you only do one, you get the only the Rotation A reward. Two, you get Rotation A and B. And then three, you get Rotation A, B, and C. And uh, Volcanic Edge can only appear at a 10% chance in Rotation C. So, fun. There is another 6060 mod that you can get in there too, called Volcanic Frost. No, fucking Vicious Frost. Okay. Here I go. See you in fucking two hours. Yes. Uh, shut up, podcast. Yes. I was like eight tries. So that was like below average, I guess. Or that above average in quickness. Hang on. Whew. All right, so this is the end of the video. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope it was a lot of help to you. I tested this Helios out on, for a while, and I'm really happy with how it performs. It works super good for my MR5 account, and I'm definitely going to be running it a lot. I'm going to make it better, probably get a ribbon for the Deconstructor to give it a 100% status chance or something. The And also the Deconstructor just does so much damage on its own. It really just kills enemies that I'm not even looking at. It's actually so sick i didn't know it was this good but yeah i've been having a lot of fun making youtube videos and i'm gonna keep doing it so if you've subscribed and are watching my videos i thank you so much it i honestly feel so good and it's, i've just been happy doing this lately so if there's anything you want to share in the comments if you have any more ideas for this setup uh please share because i would love to know for myself also because i did all this testing myself and figured out things so if i'm missing something i would like to know and I'm sure everyone else would. So again, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.